We're out here in Snowshoe, West Virginia, the best ski resort in the Southeast, maybe one of the only, but who's keeping track really? It is the premier place to be. And, uh. Anyway, as I was saying, this is the ski resort to be at in West Virginia. They have the most trails and the highest elevation and tons of activities for you to check out. If you're new to the channel, which I imagine a lot of you are going to be, my name is Justin Dickey. I'm a real estate agent here in the state of West Virginia, primarily working out of the Huntington, Barbersville area. But Snowshoe does have a special place in my heart as I worked here for seven seasons? Eight seasons, six winters, two summers. I know that my channel has mostly been about the Huntington area, what to do, what the housing market is like, but this is relevant as well since this is a great vacation spot here within the state. Uh, come out here with the family. This could be a new tradition. This is what happens when you start shooting video without a plan. You just ramble on without any structure. Allow me to take it from the top. In this video, I will give a brief overview of what Snowshoe is all about and let you know how our experience was here in January of 2024. After that, I will just conclude with some final thoughts about the resort. I know this is different from the usual content I post on the channel, but it is relevant since it's about your potential West Virginia lifestyle. Real quick, I have to promote my own services. So if you're buying or selling real estate in or around Huntington, West Virginia, get a hold of me as I would love the opportunity to earn your business. Or maybe you are considering buying a vacation home at Snowshoe Mountain, which is also a great choice. In that case, let me know because I can set you up with a great agent that knows the mountain like the back of their hand. There are some really amazing properties on the mountain like this one I shot a video of in May. It's an 8,000 square foot luxury cabin with two kitchens, a guest house, hot tub, a sauna, a game room, a wine bar, and ski out access that can sleep a multitude of families. If you want to see the epicness of the property, click the link up here or in the description. I know it's extravagant, but there are many other options available too. Let's talk briefly about Snowshoe Mountain Resort. If you want to know any more about the mountain, head over to their website. I will leave it linked down below. Then if you want to know any tips, tricks, or advice, leave a comment on the video and I will gladly help you. First of all, where is Snowshoe? It's close to the eastern side of the state in the Monongahela National Forest. I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly. That's nearly four hours from the real estate market that I serve. Be warned, however, that cell phone service will be limited at times. And if you're not accustomed to snowy driving, please use utmost caution if the roads are not perfectly plowed during your travels. Snow, slush, and ice will be slippery as you're navigating the curvy roads in the hills. Of course, the main appeal of Snowshoe is being able to utilize the lift system to ski downhill to your heart's content. So what can you expect in that department? The mountain's peak elevation is advertised as 4,848 feet, but you can just say 4848. You will see the number used in a variety of ways throughout your visit. Of that elevation, you will get 257 acres of skiable terrain, 1,500 feet of vertical drop, and 60 trails to choose from. This vertical is measured on their western territory of the mountain, which has their two black diamond rated ski slopes, and you can expect close to 800 feet of vertical drop on their main skiing area. There are more skiing opportunities midway up the mountain at Silver Creek. This is where night skiing takes place and often does not stay open as long throughout the season. In addition to skiing and snowboarding, there are other activities you can partake in on the mountain. In the winter, you can go tubing at Silver Creek, drive a snowmobile up and down the slopes, take a Polaris vehicle tour, and this year there was a skating rink available to rent. In the summer, you have a variety of other activities to check out. The slopes turn into a downhill mountain bike park where you experience the thrill of whizzing by trees, rocks, and roots while catching airtime on man-made jumps. The resort also hosts several events throughout the season, including world championship bike races, GNCC, which is a dirt bike and ATV race, music festivals, food festivals, and a massive raffle where you can win big prizes such as new trucks or wads of cash. 
There's also a chance to relax with disc golf and traditional golf. I could say a million things about what the resort offers, but most of it is on their website, so go check that out. What isn't on their website is my experience in January of 2024. Kristen and I arrive midweek, which is the best time to ski, by the way, so you don't have to deal with massive crowds. And they had just got a few inches of snow the days leading up to our arrival. The first night was all about settling in to wake up and ski the next morning. On our arrival night, we went to the junction for dinner and got there just in time to avoid the dinner rush. I ordered the plain Jane burger, I think that's what it was called, with cheddar cheese and bacon with a side of fries. The presentation was good, burger a little well for my liking, and fries could have used one more minute in the fryer for a better crisp on them. Overall, I was pleased. Kristen ordered a chicken broccoli fettuccine dish, which I had not seen at the junction before. It looked decent to me, but the garlic taste was way too intense. She ate the chicken out of it. I tried to eat the leftovers later on, but the last bit of it went to the trash. Don't let this deter you from ordering it because consistency has never been a trait of the junction. I know because I work there. So you may want to give it a shot anyways. If this is your first ski resort experience, let me go ahead and tell you, this is not the place to be tight on money. My burger was $20, the pasta dish was $22, and my 16 ounce IPA was $11. And who knows how much Kristen's White Russian was. Be prepared for this throughout your stay. The next day, we ate cheap mountain pizza and I got another beer. We ordered the 16-inch carnivore pizza and it was quite delightful. It had all of the many meats that I enjoy, but the Jamaican jerk pork added a bit of sweetness that really set it off. Definitely would recommend. Ski conditions on the slopes that were open were very good. It was groomed hard pack with a layer of snow on top. Then you could find more powder to float in if you went towards the sides. The next day was even better since it snowed overnight. Although the second day was 20 degrees and the winds were pretty strong. For mid-January, I would expect more trails to have been open, especially with all the new and improved snow guns that they had installed. But then again, you can't control mother nature, so I'm not mad. It wouldn't do me any good anyways. With forecasted favorable conditions, however, they were planning to open several more trails over the weekend. This year, Snowshoe replaced one of their staple chair lifts to increase uphill capacity. This new one fit four people per chair instead of three, even though it's tight. This is the lift that you would be taking if you're doing tricks and flips in the progression park. The gates with the LEDs are cool at least. (laughs) And the lift operators keep having to stop the lift due to people's inability to unload in an appropriate fashion at the top. Kristen and I stayed at the Silver Creek Lodge. That one is midway up the mountain and honestly is more of a budget option. The great thing about it is that it is right next to the night skiing and it features a bar, a pool, and a hot tub within its walls. To get to the Snowshoe Basin, which is the main skiing area, there is a shuttle bus that makes its rounds every 15 to 20 minutes to get you to your destination. This is the way to do it so you don't have to worry about parking and driving on the mountain. All in all, I do recommend Snowshoe Mountain Resort for thrills and great memories, whether you are playing here or working here. I'll go ahead and throw in my two cents about that aspect of mountain life. If you can get past the cold and being secluded on the mountain, it is a great working experience. You get to ski and snowboard for free all season. You get major discounts on gear and food. Employee lodging is available to most workers for an affordable rate and you get to meet people from all over the world. It's perfect for those just getting out of school or for those who need somewhere to go. Working here allows you to see a new location and meet new people, all with a low commitment since most positions are seasonal. Before signing off, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video or if you just want to have fun at Snowshoe. If you have any questions about the resort, leave a comment or shoot me an email. Things have been changing on the mountain, but I still probably have good knowledge of its inner workings. If you are considering a move to West Virginia, subscribe to the channel to learn more about the markets I served in More Things West Virginia. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.